Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at the receptors that the sympathetic nervous system uses. Remember, this is the fight or flight response. What are the receptors that they use? Where are they located and what do they do? So to begin, we need to understand that we have an autonomic nervous system. This is the nervous system that we do not consciously control. And there's two divisions. There's the sympathetic division, which we also know, uh, know as the fight or flight response, and the parasympathetic division, which we call the rest and digest response. Now, importantly, we're focusing on the sympathetic division here. Now, the sympathetic nervous system, it gets stimulated in times of stress or fear, and this is important, to keep us alive in that moment. So what are the things that happen physiologically and anatomically to you when you're scared? Let's think about it because it allows for these receptors to make sense. Well, our pupils dilate. If our pupils dilate, we get more light in, we can see more of our surroundings. Our heart rate and its contractile force goes up, so we can pump more oxygenated blood to the muscles of the body so we can fight or run away. For that to happen, we need the blood vessels at the muscles to dilate, get larger, so more of that blood can get there. But we also go pale because the blood vessels in our periphery constrict. Our airways also open up to get more air and oxygen in, and a number of other things occur. So, knowing these receptors and where they're located, it allows for all of this to make sense. So, there is a cheat sheet that you can use, always makes things a lot easier, doesn't it? So, what do I want you to do for this cheat sheet? I want you to draw up a little table for us like this. And on one side, I want you to write stimulate, and on the other side, I want you to write inhibit. And then I want you to write alpha 1, beta 1. So all the 1s are on this side. Then I want you to write alpha 2 and beta 2. Now, for those of you who are well versed in the what we call adrenergic receptors, there is a beta 3. They're located on adipose tissue, fat tissue. And when you stimulate these receptors, it tells the fat to break down, a process called lipolysis, releasing fatty acids into the bloodstream as an energy source. We're not focusing on that today, just these ones. All right, next thing you need to understand is this. These are the receptors, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And how do we get these receptors to work? Well, we need to send a chemical signal to them. Now, the chemical signal is either adrenaline, or if you're in the US, that's uh, epinephrine, or it's noradrenaline. And again, if you're in the US, that's norepinephrine. So if you throw noradrenaline or norepinephrine at these receptors, they're going to have their function. Now, you might be thinking, why does this column say stimulate, this column say inhibit? Because what I'm about to tell you is this. If you throw adrenaline or noradrenaline at either alpha-1 or beta-1 receptors, the tissue that they're located on, it will stimulate them to do their job. It's, it says, hey, do the thing that you were designed to do. If you throw adrenaline or noradrenaline at these receptors, the tissues that they're located on, it says, hey, don't do the thing that you're designed to do, all right? Let's go into more detail and figure out what we specifically mean. So firstly, let's look at alpha-1. Alpha-1 receptors are located, importantly, on blood vessels. They're also located at the pupil. So the eye, the pupil. They're also located at the bladder. And think specifically the sphincter of the bladder. I'll draw that up in a sec. So let's think about this. Important, this is really important, right? All of these have muscles associated with them. So that's important for alpha-1. So if you've got a blood vessel, right? So there's a blood vessel. Our arterioles, the smaller blood vessels, they have smooth muscle within them. And so smooth muscle is going around this blood vessel like this. Now let's think about the pupil, the eye. So here's the eye and there's the pupil. Now importantly, the pupil has muscles attached to it. Okay. Next, the bladder. The bladder, 
Here's the bladder. As you can see, the area that it needs to flow out into the ureter. It has smooth muscles surrounding it. This is the sphincter of the bladder. So remember, this is the stimulate. So if I throw adrenaline or noradrenaline at alpha-1 receptors, it stimulates these muscles to do what muscles do. And what do muscles do? They contract. So it leads to the blood vessel constricting, right? So it results in vasoconstriction. What about the pupil? Well, it tells the muscles to contract at the pupil, and that actually, very interestingly, results in the pupils dilating. The pupils get bigger because they're like guy wires pulling on the pupils. So you get dilation, the opening of the pupil. And at the bladder, you get constriction of the sphincter. Constriction. So, they're the effects of alpha-1. Now, importantly, because you've got adrenaline and noradrenaline, you might be thinking, what's the difference? Here's a really important thing to highlight, right? If you are to throw adrenaline or noradrenaline here, importantly, what we find is that noradrenaline has stronger effects on alpha-1 than adrenaline. So if, I were, so if I were to simultaneously throw adrenaline and noradrenaline at these alpha-1 receptors, noradrenaline is going to be the strongest binding and the strongest effector. You might be thinking, what's the difference? Great question. Remember that you have a neuron releasing a neurotransmitter at an organ, let's say the organ's the heart, and if that's a sympathetic neuron, the neurotransmitter that it's released is noradrenaline, right? Binding to the adrenergic receptors. But we also, this is important, have sympathetic neurons going to the kidneys and the kidneys have its little hat on its head called the adrenal gland. And the neurotransmitter that the sympathetic nervous system releases here is not noradrenaline, it's acetylcholine. And you might be thinking, that's weird. Well, the sympathetic nervous system is a two neuron chain, right? So there's the brain. You're gonna have one sympathetic neuron speaking to a second sympathetic neuron speaking to the organ. Now the first sympathetic neuron will release acetylcholine. Now if I were to draw this up the same, interestingly, the first or what we call the presynaptic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system comes from the brain and stimulates the adrenal gland. There's no second sympathetic neuron. There's no second order sympathetic neuron. And that's because the adrenal gland is the second order sympathetic neuron. And what does it release? Not noradrenaline like the second neuron does here, but adrenaline. Right? And that's super important because noradrenaline is a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter. And adrenaline is the hormone because it jumps into the bloodstream. Therefore, they are chemically very similar but have slightly different effects. So let's go back. Noradrenaline has stronger effects at alpha 1 than adrenaline. And just so you're aware, for completion's sake, for beta 2, Adrenaline, it's the opposite. Adrenaline has stronger effects than noradrenaline for beta-2 receptors. But let's move on. Let's go to beta-1 now. Beta-1 is located, what do we have one of? We've got one heart. So that's really important. And the other place that it's located is the kidneys. So let's think about this. This one's an easy one to understand because when you throw noradrenaline or adrenaline at the heart, what does the heart want to do in times of fear or stress? It increases our heart rate when it binds the beta-1 receptors at the heart and it increases the contractility of the heart. So it beats faster and it beats harder. That makes total sense delivering more blood and oxygen to the muscles. The kidneys now, this is important. So the kidneys, when you stimulate beta-1 receptors at the kidneys, it releases something called renin. Now, this video is uh, focused on adrenergic receptors, but I have done an entire video 
on the renin angiotensin and aldosterone system. What you need to know is this, if you stimulate the release of renin from the kidneys, renin ultimately results in the release of something called angiotensin II, aldosterone and ADH. Those three things together increases your blood volume and increases your blood pressure. So let's just write that down. What renin will ultimately do is increase our blood volume and increase our blood pressure. Now you might think, why do we wanna stimulate that in times of stress? Well, if our blood pressure and blood volume has gone up, that's important because it means that we can deliver more oxygen and nutrients to the tissues in that moment. All right, so that's beta one. Let's move over now to alpha two. So remember, this is inhibition. If I throw noradrenaline or adrenaline at these receptors, it tells the tissue that they're on to not do their job. So importantly, and this is actually quite interesting, alpha two is located on the presynaptic, presynaptic terminals, right? This is the very end of the neuron of sympathetic neurons. And you might be thinking, okay, what are those? Well, it's that. So if I, so this is what it's basically saying, right? When you stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, the noradrenaline will bind back onto the terminals to inhibit it. So it's don't release anymore. So it's negative feedback. All right. Also, if you dump adrenaline into the bloodstream, it will also bind and say, hey, stop. So it's, it's negative feedback. I'll actually write that down. I think that's important. So this is for providing negative feedback. Everything needs a control mechanism. Negative feedback. All right, what about beta two? So beta two, we have two lungs, right? Left and right. So it's located at our lungs, but specifically we're talking bronchioles. We're talking bronchioles. So again, I want you to think about beta two opposing alpha one. That was muscles. This is muscles, smooth muscles, right? So the smooth muscles in the airways. So if I were to draw up, you've got your trachea and let's just say, let's just pretend that these two down here are bronchioles and they're ultimately going to the lungs. That's supposed to be lungs. You've got smooth muscle lining your bronchioles. And if you throw adrenaline or noradrenaline at them, it inhibits those muscles. What do you think those muscles end up doing? They dilate, they relax, they open our airways up. Why would we wanna open our airways up? So we could bring more oxygen in to feed the muscles so we can fight or run away. Now the other thing, that be, or the other location that beta two are located is blood vessels. Now you might be thinking, we've already done that one. Yes, but here's a really important point. Blood vessels, we've got our blood vessels specifically to our muscles, right? Blood vessels to our skeletal muscles. So here's a blood vessel. You've got the smooth muscle around it. We've done this, there's the smooth muscle. But when you throw adrenaline or noradrenaline at it, it says, hey, inhibit, relax, opens up. That's important. We're opening the blood vessels to the muscles to deliver more of that oxygen and nutrients. And you might be thinking, okay, wait a minute. So we've got alpha one receptors on our blood vessels and we've got beta two receptors on our blood vessels. They both respond to adrenaline and noradrenaline. So how can it tell it to constrict and dilate at the same time? What did I say? So, at normal baselines, when you've got, you have a slight, what we call sympathetic tone. So you get sympathetic tone. This is when the sympathetic nervous system, you know, to some degree, it's always slightly activated and it's gonna be releasing noradrenaline here, noradrenaline. Remember, noradrenaline is the neurotransmitter. So when the neurons are innovating, so if I just say there's a neuron, when the neurons innovate, it's slowly saying, hey, just constrict a little bit. So this is when you're not scared. Just constrict a little bit where you can limit the blood going to the tissues of the body. But then, because of adrenaline is the strongest one here, when you get really scared, 
Your sympathetic nervous system tells your, adren uh, your adrenal gland to dump adrenaline into the blood. So when you're really scared, really scared, really scared, that adrenaline is high. And then that will bind preferentially to beta-2 receptors telling it to relax, allowing more blood to go to those muscles. So I hope this helps you understand the adrenergic receptors. I'm Dr. Mike. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.